Hello, I'm Mr. King um, at AEC South in Mississauga, and um, this is a review of grade 9 and 10 chemistry. Now, um, basically, uh, if you've been out of school for a number of years, perhaps more than six or seven years, you may have noticed, or you probably will notice, that much of what used to be grade 11 chemistry, grade 12 chemistry has been kind of rearranged and now a lot of chemistry is being taught in grade 9 and 10. In fact, uh, you're, even a, you're even supposed to be able to name compounds and balance equations by the end of grade 10. So grade 11 is just kind of added on top of that and grade 12 added on top of that. So um, all, all I'm going to do in this video is list a bunch of grade 9 topics. I'm not going to attempt to explain every single last one of them exhaustively. That's not the purpose of this video. Okay, um, It's enough in this video that I just name the topic, maybe give a little brief blurb on it just to give you a taste, but if you really want to learn these, uh, if you really feel that you need a refresher, like a major refresher, or maybe you need, maybe you weren't even given this background by your former teachers. Um, then I advise you to Google these topics if you can, um, and make sure you um, be selective for sites that look like they have school level material rather than some hugely involved topic uh, at the university level. You may notice them immediately actually. Uh, we're not looking for a, a scholarly grasp of every one of these topics but it's enough to know at the level of what a 13 year old would learn <laughs> or a 14 year old or a 15 year old actually not really 13 maybe more like 14 or 15 um, what they would learn in those grades so uh, first of all you might want to learn something about boiling point, melting point, uh, pure substances, mixtures. You want to know the differences between substances and mixtures. Viscosity, particle theory. Viscosity is something like a um, um, measure of thickness or heaviness of a liquid. Physical and chemical properties of common elements, compounds and household substances. and um, you also need to be able to tell the difference between a physical property and a chemical property. I may ask you questions like this on the on a test about a physical and chemical property of something in particular, and you have to be able to distinguish them. For example, if I ask you for a physical property, I want to hear things like hardness, whether it's shiny, in other words, its general appearance, its color, its conductivity, its density, melting point, boiling point, these are all good physical features, um, physical properties of any substance. Um, I do not want to hear about reactivity because that's a chemical property. I do not want to hear about whether it catches fire, whether it's combustible that is, because that's also chemical. Um, Tests for common gases, uh, you should know those tests. How do you test for oxygen? How do you test for carbon dioxide? How do you test for hydrogen? I'll let you look that up. Also, um, you should know the general shapes of the following uh, compounds because we're going to study molecular shapes in this course in much greater depth later on. So it's a good idea for you to uh, really get acquainted with these molecular shapes. O2, oxygen, that's oxygen gas. CO2, that's carbon dioxide. Okay. H2O, water. Okay. The shape of water, the shape of carbon dioxide, shape of oxygen. These are all very common, you know, pretty close to the most common substances on Earth. And then you have ammonia, that's NH3. And then finally, methane, CH4. These all have different shapes, and you should get acquainted with those shapes. Evolution of the atomic model. Well, um, we they only went in grade 9 as far as Rutherford. They 
they talked about Thompson and his raisin bun model and then Ernest Rutherford and his gold foil experiment and what that did was establish the existence of electrons and so on. You might want to study that because uh, really what what you should be studying for here is the application of the scientific method. How every theory is based on every previous one based on pure observation. You might want to also trace the model of the atom all the way back to Dalton um, because all he had was called a billiard ball model. Now protons, neutrons and electrons. Well by, t by the time we got to Thomson and maybe even Rutherford we probably knew about protons and electrons but they did not account for the total mass of the atom, so they had to introduce neutrons. And uh, you should be able to know the charges of these three subatomic particles, their location and their relative mass. You should know the difference between a compound and an element. You should be able to describe the chemical and physical properties of metals, nonmetals, salts, and other compounds. You should be able to describe the pattern of arrangement of the twenty, the first 20 elements, that is, uh, on the periodic table, using the Bohr-Rutherford model of the atom. In other words, you should be able to tell me, you know, given a particular, a particular atom, like, say, sodium, like, say, sulfur, um, how many protons does it have, how many electrons it has, and, of course, you should be able to figure out from that how many neutrons it has. Uh, based on the atomic mass. The relationships of elements in rows and families. So, you know, the rows being the horizontal arrangements, uh, that's an order of atomic number. And, of course, the fact that they're in rows um, tells us something about the relationships within those families, the families being the columns. So the further down you go the column, that determines the degree to which certain family-related properties, uh, chemical properties, are expressed. Um, using element symbols and compounds and representing them correctly. Okay, like Na for sodium, Mg for magnesium, uh, S for sulfur, F for fluorine, you get the picture, right? Grade 10 topics. Well, uh, by grade 10, uh, students learn how to balance an equation. And that is really the big deal in grade 10, is balancing an, e balancing an equation. And later on in grade 11, they talk about stoichiometry. But in grade 10, they talk about a compound, a product a reactant. So you should know what those are, right? You should know on, on a balanced chemical equation what side is the product, what side is the reactant, and um, know, know once again the difference between a compound and, a, and an element. Also, centrally important when balancing equations, the conservation of mass, the law of conservation of mass. Um, this was not only important because it allows you to properly balance equations that you know that on one side the masses of atoms on one side must equal the masses of the atoms on the other side, but also <laughs> this is really what got chemistry started in the first place from Antoine Lavoisier that he showed that mass is conserved in a reaction and that formed the entire basis for chemistry in the first place. It's essentially important, uh, central to chemistry, uh, no matter where you go. Understand the evidence of a chemical change. So how do you even know whether a chemical change has taken place? Represent a chemical reaction using words, models, and balanced equations. So this is where you should show your skill in balancing equations. Or maybe I can take something like, um, let's say that uh, sodium reacts with water to produce hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. And you're supposed to, you're supposed to just hear me say that and you go, okay, you write down the balanced equation. 
That's one skill you should have. Also, if you saw those words in writing, you should also be able to transfer those words into chemical symbols and a balanced equation. Related to that is your ability, you know, because without you can't really balance an equation without correctly writing the formulas. And while we're at it, you know, while we're trying to know the formulas, why don't we also teach you their names, the names of the compounds? So you also have to name the compounds. So if I give you a formula like P2O5, you should say diphosphorus pentoxide right away, just like that. Okay? Or, you know, if I give you, um, you know, an ionic compound instead of a covalent compound like MGC, like for example, magnesium chloride, oh, that's MgCl2 right away. So that includes acids, bases, binary, ternary compounds. And also you should be able to, um, you should be able to balance, or not balance, but also name ionic versus molecular compounds. And you should also know the difference because an ionic compound like magnesium chloride has a different naming system than something like P2O5 or pe diphosphorus pent pentoxide. Okay. So um, also naming and representing symbolically binary and ternary compounds or acids and bases. You should be able to uh, also tell me uh, what the polyatomic ions are in compounds like OH minus, SO2, P4, PO4 minus 3. Those are hydroxide, sulfate, and phosphate. And uh, there are, of course, many others like dichromate, manganate, and so on. Balancing equations. Um, now, I've mentioned balancing equations several times during this list of grade 10 topics, but one of the things that you must be able to do is tell me the difference between single displacement, double displacement, synthesis, and decomposition reactions. These are four different kinds of reactions that cover nearly all reactions that uh, a chemist would typically come across. Acids, bases, neutralization, and pH. You should be able to classify and name acids and bases. You should be familiar with such social, socially important topics on the environment, such as acid rain. You should also know... Um, uh, you should be aware of types of ba acid base indicators such as phenolphthalene or say instead of using chemicals use uh, chemicals soaked onto paper I guess uh, that would be in the form of litmus paper now um, here is just before I just before I finish my list you might want to ask yourself uh, about these terms as well okay also to do with grade 10 element compound ion valence metal nonmetal and that about wraps it up uh, I hope you um, look these terms up like I said this was not meant to be a exhaustive treatment of all of the topics I wasn't going for that uh, we in later videos I'm going to give you a question and answer quiz and uh, you just um, try your best and see if you can answer before I reveal the answers or maybe as a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, to give you give yourself a little bit of extra time pause the video uh, after the question is asked and then see if you can work out the answer if it needs working out or see if you can remember or maybe you need more time to remember and then turn the video on again to reveal the answer and that's how I would advise you going over the future videos